Salutations, respected viewers. This is George from Ireland. I'm going to continue my um, talk about uh, the history of the Soviet Union um, for A-level. Um, so we're looking now at the 1930s in particular and the Gulag. Remember, it's an acronym for Main Camp Administration, as in labor camps. And people were sent there to these colonies, as the Soviets called them, colonies for corrective labor. So those who'd committed the most trifling offenses, or perhaps no offense at all, um, simply being false accused, were sent there. Um, and the standards of proof in trials was very, very low. If someone denounced you, particularly if it was a police officer, something, really that was it. Your chance of acquittal was almost none. There might be an administrative procedure, there might well be no hearing, uh, and the right of appeal did not exist in effect. So millions of people were sent to the Gulag. I do mean millions, I'm not exaggerating. And that includes children. Uh, children sent to the Gulag for various crimes. Sometimes they weren't even accused of crimes, it was their parents. There were catch-all offences such as anti-Soviet agitation. What's that? Saying anything remotely critical of the Communist Party, Stalin, anything like that, that's anti-Soviet agitation. The staggering thing was the constitution of the Soviet Union said people were guaranteed freedom of expression. And indeed elections were, were sometimes held. And um, in effect, only the Communist Party stood. But in the 1930s, one election came up. Some people read the, con the Constitution and were unwise enough to take it seriously. They thought that the government meant this all in earnest, that you can have any political party you want. And some people did fall from other political parties and, of course, were instantly convicted of anti-Soviet agitation for taking the Constitution at its word and all dispatched to the Gulag. Um, so there were some people who were sent, were just petty criminals, pickpockets and the like, Others were political dissidents, um, there were clergy, as the religious leaders of um, all religious denominations. Um, the surprising thing is um, the Orthodox Church was never entirely shut down. The great majority of church buildings were seized. Um, hundreds of thousands of monks, priests, nuns were sent to the Gulag. Quite a few were executed by firing squad, but a handful of churches were allowed to function, uh, presumably because these people were agents for the secret police. That was the only way you could get away with it. Um, some people were nationalists of an ethnic minority, so we'd like independence or even real autonomy for our Soviet Republic, or even less than a Soviet Republic, perhaps an um, a autonomous republic, let's say Bashkiristan, Tatarstan. Some people were falsely accused by an enemy of any crime you can imagine, um, just being a political dissident, being a Trotskyite. That wasn't how, how, enough to have someone sent to the Gulag for years and years. So in the Gulag, people worked very long hours doing heavy labor. This could be in the burning heat or ultra low temperatures. It could be minus 40. They would have inadequate clothing. So they'd fall very ill very easily. Some of the guards were brutal. Some of the guards themselves were prisoners who survived their term. If, if they let someone escape, a guard would become a prisoner himself. The guards were reluctant to kill prisoners unless they, they really had to because that was a loss of labor. They could get in trouble for killing people wantonly. Um, food was minimal, not nutritious. Medical care was all but non-existent. The living conditions in modern huts were primitive, to say the least. Disease was rife. And of course, people in a debilitated state from overwork and malnutrition were particularly prone to various uh, maladies. Um, visits from families and relatives, you can forget it. Uh, mail was a rare luxury. Some people went years without even seeing a mirror and seeing how they'd aged in a few years. So eventually there were millions of prisoners in these camps and they formed a major part of the economy. There was a certain road in Siberia built. Uh, it's called the Road of Bones because so many people perished the construction of this route. Um, the White Sea Canal was a, another gargantuan civil engineering project which was undertaken using slave labor. It was to connect the White Sea to the Baltic so the Navy could sail from one to the other. In fact, it was a white elephant. Early in the Second World War, the Luftwaffe bombed it, put it out of commission. Um, and even, um, uh, it's over not the Second World War, so the buildings of um, Moscow State University, now named after Lomonosov, some of that was built by these uh, political prisoners. Um, so there was nothing but drudgery to look forward to, unremitting toil. The Gulag, it's astonishing more people didn't take their own lives. And if someone's spouse was sent to the Gulag, he or she would often be told, you're allowed to remarry, because we don't expect that person to come back. Quite often, if one spouse did something, the other one sent to the Gulag as well, not to the same one. They wouldn't be permitted to spend time together. Um, anyway, somebody who said to a gulag was regarded as good as dead by many people. Some people considered it sagacious to distance themselves from their spouse if he or she was dispatched to the gulag. 
Um, so the Gulag was a cog in the wheel of the, of the four-year plan. So a five-year plan, rather. So um, things went so fast in the five-year plan that expanding industry and attempting to increase agricultural output that accidents were bound to occur. Illiterate workers who'd never seen a car, they're from deep in the countryside, were suddenly expected to operate sophisticated machinery with uh, inadequate training. Um, so people had to work to very tight deadlines and mishaps necessarily became frequent. The 1930s saw a worldwide Great Depression. Food prices slumped. The export of grain had been a major plank of the Soviet economy for 40 years, fueling industrialization. As the world price dipped, um, this was not a way to earn much foreign exchange, to buy machinery. Um, so the government decided we're going to have to export even more food than before because the price is lower, which of course simply increased the problem because there's a glut on the market. This did no good for the diets of um, hungry Soviet citizenry. Well, one thing I can say is there's almost no obesity in the Soviet Union because people would have just enough to eat if they were lucky. Um, this comes onto the strange death of Nadezhda Aleluyeva. Um, food was being taken almost literally out of the mouths of Soviet children to fund uh, Stalin's megalomaniac schemes. In the Ukraine, this became known as the Holodmor, as in the uh, famine, a state-caused famine to punish the population. At least hundreds of thousands of people died of hunger at this time of increased agricultural production. Yes, it's staggering. As agricultural yields went up, more people died of starvation. So it was a man-made famine. The evidence of mass starvation was absolutely overwhelming. Um, you could see people starving all the time. There are many uh, eyewitness accounts of it, indeed in the records of the Soviet secret, secret police. Stalin's own wife, Nadezhda Aleluyeva, saw it with her own eyes um, and uh, is believed to have berated her heartless husband, you must do something about this misery that's being caused. She became a communist because she believed they're trying to save the needy, were trying to help the poor, not starve them to death. How has it gone so badly wrong? Um, there were a party in the Kremlin in 1932 because the uh, party elite lived in luxury, the kind of thing they denounced the capitalist class for. And uh, he shouted across a crowded room, Hey, you, have a drink. And she shouted back, My name is not you. She stormed off. Hours later, she's found shot dead in her flight. Murder or suicide? No one's sure to this day. Um, did Stalin kill her himself? Or was she killed on his orders? Or maybe she did take her own life. It was announced to the press that she died of an illness. Um, three doctors refused to sign off on a death certificate to say that she died of an illness. It definitely wasn't an illness. Those three physicians were all executed. It was a very courageous man who would defy the will of Stalin. I wouldn't have done it. <clears throat> so communism was going on by, so it seemed. So many communists thought that things were going very badly wrong. Well. There was that famine in the Ukraine and Russia and other places in the, and in the Kazakhstan. But I don't think Ukraine is particularly singled out for this because it's, it's questionable who's Ukrainian, who's Russian in uh, eastern Ukraine, certainly. Many people got a foot in both camps. So um, people of all Soviet republics suffered, perhaps the Ukraine more severely than others because it was the breadbasket of the country. Um, it'd been under German, Austro-Hungarian rule before, so Stalin was very mistrustful of it. Trotsky came from there. That was another reason to say, well, we must decimate the Ukrainian population. Stalin had inflicted untold agony upon his people. He built up a cult of the personality. Um, there were those uh, who opposed Trotsky and hoped to avoid a cult of the personality. Stalin's image was omnipresent. Artists painted him in oils, and there was a statue of him in every town square. Streets and squares were named in his honour. Volgograd, it was called Stalingrad at the time. He was shown as a towering and regal figure, whereas in fact he was five foot four and severely pockmarked from uh, smallpox, a disease which has been eradicated since. Um, so he may well have suffered from the most violent ever case of small man syndrome. He manifested this profound sense of inadequacy on an industrial scale. His name was always pronounced with exclamation uh, in the newsreels, Stalin, like that. Writers seemed to exhaust the dictionary in finding adjectives to extol him. Um, poets were constantly composing pians to him. Uh, there were not enough superlatives to laud him for his manifold virtues. Films depicted him in the most favourable possible light. Uh, he was meant to be a hero of the people. Paint paintings were commissioned to show him beside Lenin at crucial moments in the October Revolution. 
In fact, it was against the October Revolution, changed its tune later on. Trotsky's role was downplayed. Trotsky was excised from many photos. Historical records uh, were doctored. Archives were weeded for documents which would reflect credit on Trotsky. Um, so Trotsky was not to be seen as a leader confrère of Lenin. People were encouraged to call their leader Comrade Stalin. Um, his name was written into the national anthem. Stalin's articles adorned the front page of Pravda, the main newspaper meaning truth. He'd briefly been editor of Pravda in the early 1920s. Um, he considered having Moscow renamed Stalinodar, as in Stalin's gift. However, that was one arrogance too far, even for him. Um, so he had acted with the most horrific cruelty. Um, he'd made the Tsar seem kind by way of comparison. He'd imprisoned millions upon millions of people, many of them totally innocent, and ordered the executions of tens of thousands. He'd caused a totally avoidable famine in the countryside. So then there was an attempt to have him removed as um, first secretary of the Communist Party. Uh, so a congress was held every few years. So delegates from the, from the Communist Party from all over the Soviet Union meeting in Moscow. And there was a vote to vote Stalin out and replace him with Sergei Kirov, who was the first secretary of the Communist Party in Leningrad, officially, well, sorry, effectively mayor of Leningrad. He was a handsome young man. He spoke with panache when well, he was only in his 30s. Um, he'd been a day one Bolshevik. So a ballot box was opened and there were a handful of votes for Stalin and there were none from Kirov. Out of almost a thousand delegates, only a very small number voted at all. What? No abstentions? What had happened? Blatantly, Stalin's minions had removed and destroyed those ballot papers cut cast in favour of Kirov. Well, that was 1934, and um, Stalin realised that uh, he could not survive if Kirov did. Um, so Kirov was a committed communist, but had, had seen how things had just gone on the wrong path, and the country needed to be put back on the right path to actually serving the people, and not these madcap schemes of, of grandeur. Um, just provide food, that's the most basic duty of a government. In December 1934, Kirov was in his office at the Smolny Institute in Leningrad, Leningrad, a former girls' school, was the headquarters of the Communist Party there. A man called Leonid Nikolaev walked in. Kirov's bodyguards were curiously busy, not there. Uh, they'd been detained by the secret police. Nikolaev went straight to Kirov's office. Somehow he knew where it is, never having been in the building before. He saw where Nikolaev was and he shot him dead immediately. Um, Nikolaev made no attempt to flee and immediately submitted to arrest handed over his gun. Anyway, he was later questioned by Stalin in person. Nikolaev refused to believe who it was. Then he was shown uh, a photo of, of Stalin, a well-known photo beside the real man. Um, so he was stunned. Nikolaev confessed in court that he did not act alone as part of an enormous anti-Stalin conspiracy. He was found guilty at a secret trial and executed by shooting. Uh, he was executed that same evening. Usually people were executed within hours of sentence. No chance of appeal, no chance to meet their last relatives. It was an utterly uh, heartless system. Um, why was Stalin so eager to silence Nikolaev forever? Um, well, perhaps he knew things which might have been dangerous if they were known by the public. Kirov was given an enormous funeral. Stalin was chief mourner. Kirov was laid to rest the Kremlin war necropolis. So, Stalin exploited the death of Kirov. He could capitalize it on it as he'd done the death of Lenin 10 years earlier. Stalin said it was blatant that there was a nefarious plot that needed to be rooted out, that needed to be destroyed, all these wicked conspirators. Over um, 200 of Kirov's associates and even distant relatives were arrested. Many of them were executed. I'll stop there.